and women who make the motion pictures that you enjoy in your neighborhood theater honor their own at the annual presentation of Academy Awards. Fred Astaire presents the headline Oscar, Best Picture, accepted by producer Robert Wise for West Side Story, which garners a total of 10 Academy Awards, second to Ben-Hur on the all-time list of Oscar winners. Another highlight in the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium is Joan Crawford's announcement that Swiss-born Maximilian Schell wins the Best Actor Award. He is the younger brother of the actress Maria Schell. The audience hears Burt Lancaster call the name of Sophia Loren, Best Actress winner in her first nomination. Miss Loren is not present, but lovely Greer Garson accepts the Oscar in her behalf. A moment that will be remembered for its spontaneity comes with Rock Hudson's announcement of Rita Moreno as Best Supporting Actress. The Puerto Rican-born singer-dancer is simply overwhelmed by it all. Good Lord! I leave you with that. Oscar night in Hollywood, with the motion picture industry agog to know the winners of those coveted awards. For the crowds, close views of the stars in person. Jimmy Stewart, for instance. No mistaking Yul Brynner. Tony Curtis and Janet Lee. Winner of the award for best supporting role, Peter Ustinov. With tense excitement, the big audience awaited Yul Brynner's dramatic announcement. Best woman performer of the year, Elizabeth Taylor. As Eddie Fisher escorted his wife, Yul Brenner made ready for the presentation. And what a popular choice. It seemed only days ago that Elizabeth Taylor was desperately ill in London, her life despaired of. Sent you with an award. You have been so wonderful for the last seven years in mastering and ceremonying our show, so uh, would you accept this? What is that? I've an Oscar for many years. Here it is. Are you sure you can spare this? Huh? Yes. I knew that Look gave an award, but this is the first time I ever knew that Reader's Digest was in this racket. Well, <laughs> look, the, your name is in it. I'll run down to the gas station and have it pumped up. Thank That's you, right. Mr. Herschel. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. <laughs> Ray Milan collects his Academy Award, and Greer Garson gets one too. Then back comes Bob, still full of hope. Thank you, Ann Garner. I want to congratulate you for winning this award for the most promising child actress in 1945. It was wonderful work. Thank you very really much. Really great. Okay. I hear you got an Oscar. Yes, I did. I won one too. It hasn't grown up yet, you know. What for? These things have children. Pardon? What for? What did I win it for? Yes. Well, it was a funny thing. I was, uh, I got... What made you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> Oscar night in Hollywood, when the motion picture world names its top performers of the year and the greatest picture. Ingrid Bergman got a big welcome, and Joe Louis, former heavyweight champ, a spectator tonight. Tony Curtis and his wife, Janet Lee. It was all the police could do to keep away clear for the star's entrance. Susan Hayward, unaware of it at this stage, got the award for Best Actress. On the stage were John Wayne and Irene Dunn, who named David Nevin Best Actor of the Year. It was the first time the debonair Britain, favoured on both sides of the Atlantic, had won the top award, though he starred for 20 years. Awarded a special honorary Oscar for his playing in Gigi was veteran Maurice Chevalier, announced by Rosalind Russell. And by overwhelming vote, Gigi itself was declared the year's best picture. Dean Martin and Sophia Loren announced the names of Alan J. Lerner and Frederick Lowe. 
winner's Oscar was for the best lyric. For the music of Gigi, Frederick Lowe, here with Lerner, won another of the awards garnered by that great film. Nine Oscars for Gigi, highest since Gone with the Wind. There couldn't be greater praise than that. Thank you.